Tell me, though, what's his technique? That last strike, it seems invincible. Hello, and welcome to Sons of the Dragon Game Mobile on this podcast. My name is Connor McKenna, and Carl Stout has a migraine, which really sucks. So, let's all wish Carl a speedy recovery, and hopefully we're back to the usual schedule next week. As for this week, I will be covering an issue of Daredevil uh, that is kind of related, but first, let's talk about Iron Fist news. There's not much. But what there is, is Misty Knight is confirmed to be in the Iron Fist show. I'm sure many of you are pleased with that. And there's rumours, just rumours, talk that there is a spin-off. But Jeff Loeb himself said that that is pure speculation. While they have plans for all the characters, they do have a limit of the amount of shows Netflix will let them have, otherwise they'll just be the Marvel channel, which is something I've been concerned about because we're getting a lot of shows and more shows keep getting confirmed and it's like, well, damn, you know, you can only release two of these shows a year and the the list just keeps piling up, so it feels like, you know, soon we'll have to wait five years for another season of a particular show, but anyway... Yeah, so that, that that's it for the news, unfortunately. Um, this issue we mentioned a while back, Daredevil 359. It's vaguely similar, similar enough to the Power Man and Iron Fist 5 that came out recently, where there's people calling in about a particular event that happened with Danny and Luke, and tell it from their different perspectives. This issue is similar in the sense that people are calling into the radio, to tell them what they think about Daredevil. And, you know, there's different... People think some crazy things about him, stuff like that. So, strap in. It's a pretty comfy, relaxed issue. I'll be reading out some of the dialogue, because it's pretty good. And it's just that sort of format, this issue, I guess. But, yeah. So, for those of you who don't know, I'll just give you a brief rundown on Daredevil himself. Daredevil is a blind lawyer by day and a vigilante by night. When he was young, he pushed a man out of the path of an oncoming truck and, for his efforts, got some weird radioactive goop splashed on his eyes. Whatever. The point is, it acted as a catalyst and sped up his, well, evolution, so to speak. No, he's not a mutant. But, yeah, now his... Uh, all his senses, besides, except for his side, are working at the level to which humans will one day evolve to. So they're, they're, they're super sensors. They work super. Like, he... Yeah. And he, he also got a radar sense, so he can quote-unquote see everything around him. He just can't see details, but he can see shapes, stuff like that. And it's 360-degree vision. So he, he's still blind, but you know what I mean. And he uses other sensors to create a picture, if you will. So, yeah. So this was published in December 1996. Now, at the time, there was some sort of Marvel event that happened. Uh, the, the, like, the Avengers, Fantastic Four, are, like, pretty much assumed dead. I'm not sure about everyone else. And I don't know what the event is. I could really research it and try and find it if I want, but frankly, I don't care. You know, I read through these old data runs, and, like, there's always around... <sighs> midway through Nascenti's run, from that point on, there's, like, always an event going on which affects everything. So, yeah. Anyway, on to the issue. So the cover is, like, a really awesome movie poster. So, in the background, we have a shadowy face of Daredevil in costume. In the foreground, we have a shadowy face of Karen Page speaking into a microphone. And we have 
uh, in the background, sort of. Well, it, it, it's like in front of Daredevil's chest where the D is. Uh, Daredevil chasing a car speeding away and a guy, the driver leaning out of the car and shooting at him. And it's awesome. Background's black. It looks very, uh, yeah, very action movie. It's great. Um, you'll see when I post the episode anyway, but yes. So, first page we open, and there is Foggy's fat head. Well, it's not too fat. And he's asking if Matt's there. They're in the office. And Matt says, Foggy, from the darkness. And Foggy is startled because he keeps forgetting somehow that Matt is blind and doesn't need to have lights on. So Matt's just working alone in the dark. And it, it's a really nice uh, panel. You can just, you can vaguely see Matt's outline just in the pitch blackness uh, because of the blinds in the background. And then Matt apologizes and in another great panel, flicks the light on. And it gives him a great sort of I don't know. I don't know the word for it, but he looks great. Like, it's... Yeah. <laughs> I don't know the word for it. He looks... I don't want to say shadowy, because I've said that a lot, but... I don't know. It just... It looks really good. Like, it, like those old black and white noir movies. He flicks the light on, and it's all shaded and stuff. And anyway, it, it's good. It sets the mood, is what I'm trying to say. It sets the mood. Also, sorry for any traffic in the background... Yeah, it's just, I can't solve that right now, because I can't make cars stop. One day, I'll be able to. But yeah, Foggy's mentioning how he's going to pick up his mother, and he's also wondering if Rosalind Sharp is still there. Now, the status quo at the moment in Daredevil is Matt and Foggy are both working for Foggy's biological mother, Rosalind Sharp. And Foggy is off to meet his mother who adopted him. So basically, his real mother is Rosalind Sharp, but he only just met her like a few months ago. And she bullied Matt into working for her because she only wants Matt to work for her, not Foggy. But Foggy is part of the... Matt negotiated so that Foggy would get the job as well. And if he didn't take it, then Foggy would be fired. Anyway. Yeah, so, and uh, they're talking, and apparently Karen has a new job. A job that works very late nights and early hours. So, you know, Matt's a bit concerned about that. Uh, Foggy Foggy tells Matt, you know, relax, she's a grown woman, she can look after herself. But Karen Page has a bit of a sordid history with the whole, you know, she went off to become an actress, then she got addicted to heroin, did prostitution, did bad, naughty movies, and, yeah. That being said, Karen is doing a lot better now. Right, let's talk about Karen for a second. So most of you are probably familiar with Karen Page from the Netflix show, um, who's kind of similar, I guess. Uh, no offense to Karen, but Karen is a pretty bland character, so I'm not sure. Yeah, I guess the show is accurate because you could do anything and have it be accurate. Just a nice girl. Well, she's bland for a while. Uh, she is a... Uh... She's. I hate her. I hated her in the early Daredevil. All she would do is pine after Matt. She was selfish. She just had all these crazy schemes. But, you know, uh, then Born Again came, which is where Matt saved her, I guess, from her life of drug addiction, all that stuff. And she got really good after that. She got likable, interesting, and she was a really nice person. So, yeah, uh, she's good. She's good now. So, yeah, that, that that's us talking about Karen Page. Hmm. Sorry, I'm crazy. I need Carl here to rein me in. <sighs> anyway. So, yeah. Then we have Daredevil musing. Oh, and also Foggy and Karen know that Matt is Daredevil at this point. So, Matt's musing about how he could really find out what Karen did for work if he wanted. He could just follow her around by the sound of her pulse focus on her distinctive scent from blocks away even as she entered a building, know what floor she got off the elevator by traces of her perfume, and yeah, but that's, he has these gifts and he can do it, but that's no excuse to spy on his girlfriend, because gotta remember, 
Matt's main characteristic is he's a good guy. So, yeah. And so he's going out on patrol. There's a great panel of him suiting up in the dark. He's got his billy club out, and then he leaps at the window looking for a distraction. So he goes on patrol, and luckily there's always something to do in New York. And he literally drops in on a robbery. And, oh, at this point, Daredevil's quipping a lot. Mind if I drop in, or is this a private robbery? Daredevil, uh, he goes through phases, because he started off quipping a lot, kind of like he was Spider-Man, but a lot less funny. And then he got all moody, post Frank Miller, and then he got all, like, quippy again, then moody again, then quippy again, and I don't know what he's doing right now. He's probably moody again to mirror the show or whatever, but yeah. Anyway, he breaks up this robbery. This guy is standing outside of this taxi cab mugging people who are getting out. And, so yeah, Stan Lee presents... This is the page with the writers and the title on it. Stanley Preve- presents The Man Without Fear As You've Never Seen Him Before in The Devil You Know. So, different title to the cover. Cover says The Long Night. This says The Devil You Know. I mean, both are good titles, but whatever. Guilty of Having Way Too Much Fun is Carl Kiesel, the writer. Larry Harmer, who did the layouts. Now keen listeners do you guys remember larry harmer hmm you should you really should so whoever remembers larry harmer send us a comment or a message whatever details will be at the end of that as usual of where you should know larry harmer from and we'll mention you on the next podcast and say hey this guy knows where larry harmer was from And he's smart, he's a genius, and we'll mention you. And it'll be good. I mean, I could just tell you where he's from, but that's not fun, is it? Because, yeah, that's not fun at all. And, oh yeah, try and do it without looking at Wikipedia or Google. You know, it's kind of cheating. Just, just try and use your brains, your memory. Anyway, Larry Harmer did the layouts. Carrie Nord did the pencils. Matt Ryan inks. Jim Novak letters. Ian Laughlin. Lachlan, oh, I don't know. Sorry, Ian. Colors. Uh, James Felder is the editor, and Bob Harris is the chief. Sorry if there's pauses sometimes. I need to breathe, because I'm not Superman. And I'm also not J. David Weeder, who does an awesome show called Dave's Daredevil Podcast. It's a free plug for him there. Um, check that one out. Because, yeah. He, he, he does he does a great Daredevil podcast. It's sort of like our Iron Fist podcast, but a lot better. And yeah, he's what ultimately inspired me to do this podcast. So there you go. Anyway, now Daredevil is holding this mugger's nose. Good lord, there's something on your face. Don't worry, I've got it. Hey, ow, let go. And yeah. Turns out the victim to be is a retired army, very capable of holding a prisoner until the authorities arrive. So, Daredevil lets this senior citizen hold his gun at the mugger until authorities arrive, I guess. So, Daredevil makes the usual deal with the devil. Watch for Mr. Hyde and call the law officers of Sharp, Nelson, and Murdoch if he's seen. And Daredevil doesn't know if it's good news or a sign of the apocalypse, but he hasn't heard a call about Hyde in a while. Another thing here, Mr. Hyde is currently roaming around somewhere. Uh, Daredevil is essentially, every citizen he comes across, every citizen he saves says, if they see Mr. Hyde, call Nelson and Murdoch, because Daredevil is out to bust that guy in the face with a billy club. He's mean. He wants to beat him up. And it's fair enough, because Mr. Hyde is an evil jerk. Now, Mr. Hyde was originally a Thor villain for like one or two issues, I think. I might be wrong. And then he became a Daredevil villain. From Thor to Daredevil. Yeah. Weird transition there, gotta say. Especially since, like, Daredevil has always been a B-lister. Because you think of the X-Men, Spider-Man, Fantastic Four. Daredevil was one of those guys. He was part of the original Marvel, like, pantheon, whatever you want to call it. Pantheon's an odd word. Anyway, so, but 
From the start, Daredevil's always been a B-list. He was the only B-lister in that lineup. Hell, Daredevil came before the Avengers. And I think, oh, it was either Dave or someone guest starring on Dave's podcast that explains why the Avengers wouldn't even exist without Daredevil, which is very interesting. Um, but I digress. So, back to the issue. Yeah. So, Daredevil seeing that Mr. Hyde, then wait. He thinks he hears Karen's voice from inside of the cab. But all he can hear is the driver punching buttons on the radio a little too quickly. So Daredevil leans in and asks if he can talk. And he notices that the cab driver's heartbeat is an overload and he smells of fear. Which apparently smells hot and coppery. So, the cab goes off with the driver... And Daredevil's like, well, there's a chance he misunderstood me, or he's up to something no good. So I kid you not, he steals this kid's skateboard, and the kid essentially tells him to fob off for that, and Daredevil hooks his billy club onto the back of the taxi and follows along on the skateboard. Um, yeah. Art and shading, all that stuff, great in this issue, by the way. Stellar. Definitely read this issue if you haven't yet. So... Yep, he's, you know, quipping, whatever. He's just being a smart aleck. But now we go to WFSK. Yes, that's Wilson Fisk. That does stand for Wilson Fisk. But he doesn't currently own it because Daredevil really took him to town recently and Kingpin is just at the bottom rung in hiding. He is not happy. But yeah. So, we have someone talking, a radio host that looks like Daredevil, last of the Red Hot Heroes. I'm Paige Angel, and that's what I want to discuss between the discs tonight. The Fantastic Four and Avengers are gone, but their enemies linger on. So, when the Masters of Evil knock down your door, who are you going to call? Looks like the best one to trust is the devil you know. But what do we know about the man without fear? You tell me. And this radio host Paige Angel is obviously Karen Page. This is what her job has been. And she obviously doesn't want to tell Matt because it's a building that was owned by Wilson Fisk and even has his name on it. So, yeah. And the board's lighting up. People love calling her. And, yeah. So we have our first caller. Take your basic human torch. Don't gotta be a rocket scientist to figure out what he does, know what I mean? But old Hornhead, as far as I see, he's a normal guy in a red suit. And I stopped believing in Santa Claus a long time ago, know what I mean? You see, I'd love to be able to do a New Yorker accent here, but Australians aren't very good at accents, as far as I know. Maybe it's just me. So I'm not gonna do a New Yorker an- accent. I'm sure Carl would if he was here, but he hasn't. So, which sucks. I hate migraines. Moving on. Okay. Uh, And Karen remarks she'll never stop believing. Talking about Daredevil. Unless she believes in Santa Claus still. Who knows? Peter and Queens, you're on the air. Now, who do we know that lives or lived in Queens and is called Peter? Hmm? Peter Parker. But this is definitely not Peter Parker. I think that's just a slight nod to Peter. Because Peter Parker knows who Daredevil is at this point. I know it seems like everyone does, but they don't. They will soon, though. Ten years, I think? Yeah. Anyway. So, Peter, he kind of studies superheroes, you know? Collects stuff about him. And he's got this idea about DD. Sorry, I've got the physical copy here, so I'm just flipping through ads. Very old ads from the 90s. So... He thinks Dee Dee would have been a real swinger before he was dead, or kind of a Frank Sinatra type, living on the edge of all those dames and dice and depth. Wise guys don't like wisecracks too much. Watch a few Scorsese movies, and you'll know that. Scorsese movies? Everyone knows Goodfellas Casino? Good. And, yeah. So, he got shot down by wise guys, this guy reckons. And we're not talking Pearly Gates here. See... He's the man without fear. He wasn't scared. He just walked up to Satan and argued as good as the best lawyer that he'd been sent there by mistake. And he won. He convinced Satan that he was just didn't want to be there. How else did he get his name? You know, Daredevil. Get it? <laughs> and we have a good shot of Daredevil 
Uh, so this whole page, you know, we start off with uh, Matt with floozies and dames, you know, around his arms and he gets shot to death. And then he has him, like, going up to Satan. And then in the final thing, we have Daredevil standing on a rooftop in a classic pose, except he's snapping his fingers and saying, smoking. There are all those times Daredevil's being killed, that never happened. He can't be killed, that's part of the deal. Since day one, only one guy's been Daredevil. I'm totally positive of that. Yeah, in the public eye, I think Daredevil, uh, it's sketchy. Daredevil has died a couple of times. There was a whole Mike Murdoch fiasco, you know, where Daredevil... Where Matt Murdock pretended to have a twin called Mike Murdock who could see, and Mike Murdock was Daredevil, and Mike Murdock told them that he was dead. It was so weird, but he killed off Mike, and yeah, it was crazy. It was really crazy. Uh, back in Stanley, Gene Collins' run was very odd. But, yeah. <laughs> anyway, and, uh, you know, before, before Paige can uh, say goodbye to Peter, he has another idea about government suppressing Reed Richards' cancer cure, but that's a story for another time. As we cut back to Daredevil, uh, still on the tail of this cab driver who's just unloading his gun at him, and Daredevil's just dodging on his skateboard. And, you know, Daredevil's usually, you know, happy playing around with a guy like this, get some good exercise. But that was when there was at least a dozen other heroes covering the waterfront, not to mention the rest of town. The longer he spends with the taxi, the more likely Electra was zapping some ATMs clean of cash with no one stopping him. So I like how Daredevil's concerned that, about that, but not the bystanders that might get hit if he just follows a guy who's shooting at him constantly, but whatever. So, Daredevil gets launched into the air, but he avoids the woman and her two children and does a little flip on a flagpole, sort of looks like a flagpole. Uh, Daredevil mentions that this is a slight variation on a maneuver first introduced by Captain America in April 1943. Now was that Captain America's creation date? I'm not sure, I'm gonna look that up right now, because that's a very specific reference. Let's see, Captain America 1943. No, don't want that. <sighs> no, I don't think he was in Vendor 43. Maybe there was just something that happened in the issue of April 1943. I'm not sure. If our listeners know, feel free to send us an email, obviously. Yeah. So, Daredevil lands on the roof of the taxi. And, you know, he's... Dead was like, alright, turn the meter off, you're getting out here. Although he's being snarky and quippy about it, obviously. So we go back to Page Angel, Karen Page. And, uh, yep, yeah, we, we come into the middle of a call where someone's asking, you know, whatever happened to those little wise guys that Dead we used to help out, Page? Those kids were so funny. And Paige says that she has no idea what he's talking about, but she'll look into it. And that's a reference to Anne Nocenti's Daredevil run, where Matt and Karen ran this sort of uh, big free clinic thing. It was weird. It was good though, and like there was these little kids that always got into trouble and stuff, and Daredevil like knew them, ran around with them, helped them out and stuff. Yeah, but there was some like really dark stories. But I, again, digress. And Ascenti's run. Good run. Check it out. Criminally underrated. Uh, you, can get the, you can get the bulk of her run, not all of it, but the bulk, in the Daredevil Epic Collection Typhoid's Kiss, which collects the Typhoid Mary saga, then the uh, the Stranger Wandering Stranger saga. I don't know. Daredevil's just disheveled and wandering around for ages, and there's Mephisto. Blackheart gets introduced, so good stuff. Definitely pick that up if you can. Great one. So underrated. It's odd. Very weird. But a good run anyway. And it's a uh, John Romita Jr. drawing. Can't complain about that. Back to the issue. Um, next caller is Wade in Staten Island. Hello Paige, I'm glad you're doing this show because there's something about Daredevil that's always bothered me. The fact that his mask actually covers his eyes. 
I know a few people, a few friends in real life that always ask me like, how do they not know he's blind because his mask always covers his eyes? Well, I guess this guy's asking at least. Now I don't know why no one's ever mentioned this before, but I do think the reason is fairly obvious. Something must have happened to Daredevil's eyes. And then it has a shot of Daredevil taking off his mask here to show his hideous insect eyes. I don't know what I, I don't know what, but I think it's safe to assume that they don't look normal. Maybe, and I know this is going to sound stupid, but maybe he was bitten by a radioactive bug of some kind. Maybe he has faceted insect eyes. Think about it. I'm sure you've heard the same reports I have. Daredevil must have some sort of night vision, x-ray vision, possibly even sees across a wide spectrum invisible to the rest of us. I wouldn't be surprised to find out that Daredevil can see better than anyone else on this planet. And Karen remarks that he, he's either right or wrong on that one. And that guy's pretty close to the truth. <laughs> Very close. And next caller is Samuel and you, Mark. Samuel. And I can't believe we treat him as a saviour. When he tells us to our face, he's the devil. And it has a great shot here of this towering, monstrous looking daredevil with the, you know, pitchfork and stuff consuming souls in hell and uh the guy goes on to say you didn't you think he didn't orchestrate the onslaught that murdered not only that murdered oh sorry that murdered only the most inspirational of our heroes and now we turn to him for salvation can't you see that's his plan these are the end times and and karen's rolling her eyes and she goes um thanks for reminding me sonya we are almost out of time and i want to squeeze in one more call Hello, Lower East Side. I don't think we got your name. It doesn't matter. He's watching me wherever I go. Day or night, his eyes... His eyes follow me. I wonder what Midnight Radio would be like this. People with just crazy people calling you. Can't talk long or he'll find me. I'm hiding from him, trying to save my skin. No, trying to save my hide. <laughs> That's funny, isn't it? Very funny. Yeah, this is Mr. Hyde calling... Although he's not in his hard form right now. But yeah. But what he's doing to me isn't funny. And you know why he's doing it? Because I didn't commit a crime. Because I'm innocent. But I will have my revenge. I invented the devil's brew, you know. I can't use it now, but I will. One day I will. I am the devil. And I'll prove it by killing the devil. And then he hangs up. Um, yeah, Mr. Hyde got off innocent. But Daredevil knows that he's not innocent. Which is why he's tracking him. And, Dead and Mr. Hyde's hiding. So, yeah. And Karen says, well, if they're that worried, maybe go to the cops. Now we cut back to Daredevil, and yeah, there's a fire hydrant knocked over, and the cab is upside down. And as Daredevil pulled out the guy from the cab, he started babbling about how he and his pal cruised the city looking for likely marks hailing cabs. They pull over, his pal acting as if it was his stop, he'd get out then spin around and push the marks into the back seat at gunpoint. A short drive and a quick robbery later, they were ready for the next fare. Yeah. So, yeah. Dead of remarks that maybe he told me out of gratitude, but I like to think it's that I put the fear of the devil in him. Now, I don't know why... Whatever. I don't need to question Dead of logic. And then he overhears the radio from the cab car. Had the FF and Avengers to bail him out, there's no way Daredevil can pick up the psych. DD's only one man page. And <laughs> we have a kind of priceless, shocked Daredevil face expression as he figures out that Karen is indeed the radio host of the Wilson Fisk radio station. So yeah, we cut to Foggy walking into his apartment with his uh, mum, like his adopted mum. And, you know, she pretty much mildly tells him off for uh, the fact that his house looks the exact same as last time she was there and the fact that she's working for Rosalind especially after what Rosalind did to his father and Foggy well, goes hey look what was under my door some kind of invitation wonder what and then the mother goes don't change the project soggy yeah <laughs> the project soggy yeah no don't change the subject foggy and we have a little uh Editor's note here, which they should definitely do more of these days. 
saying it's an invite to the one party no true Marvelite will want to miss over in Spider-Man 75 on sale now. For the record, that Spider-Man issue is called Night of the Goblin and I believe it's where a certain character dies. Yes. Anyway. You know, so uh, then Poggy gets a phone call from Rosalind apologising for the whole fiasco of her being super mad at him after the Mr. Hyde case. And uh, uh, we cut to... Karen again, talking to a caller, and the caller is just saying, you know, Daredevil used to be a guy who could really kick butt, now he's acting like some class clown, what's he thinking, Paige? Big yucks will stop the muties, stop the muties next time they attack, muties is mutants, obviously, and Karen goes, at least he's actually thinking, and I'm thinking it's time to move on to Rosalind in Manhattan, now before we continue, that ref, uh, he's obviously talking about how Daredevil is quipping a lot now. Whereas he used to be, you know, real hardcore, no nonsense. Because uh, there was a lot of critics of this run as well, the Carl Kiesel and then Joe Kelly run, is that Daredevil was too light-hearted. But, I like this run. It's not the best run ever, but it's enjoyable. Daredevil himself was light-hearted, but the events around him are still intriguing. All that stuff, and there's a great book set in this era called The Cutting Edge, which I highly recommend. But yes, moving on to Rosalind's phone call to Karen. Thank you, Paige. I've been listening to your fascinating show tonight. But if you want to know about Dedo, you should talk to my partner, Franklin Nelson. He's the man without fear's closest friend, you know. By luck, he's on my other line right now. Franklin, tell everyone in Radio Land what Daredevil's really like. You're on the air, my boy. So, she's put Foggy in a, well, noose here. Foggy's just like, um, uh, well... I guess you could say I've known Dee Dee a long time, kind of, and uh, from the beginning I helped him with some of his cases and he helped me with a lot of mine. Those were the days, the two of us ready to take on the world, there was never a dull moment, that's for sure. So I guess I know Dee Dee pretty well, but there's things he keeps to himself, things that don't really matter except they do, and that bothered me, but lately I've been thinking, maybe we all have things like that. And during that speech, there's a great panel of uh, Daredevil giving the Foggy the thumbs up, and this is when Daredevil was wearing his yellow and maroon costume, the Bumblebee outfit. I like the yellow costume, it's great. Which he only wore for the first six issues. But, and yes, um, he's Daredevil is apprehending Mr. Fear and the Enforcers, and that was Daredevil issue six. For all you completionist fans who want to read everything I mention out there, and continuing Foggy's speech, you know, Daredevil always treated me like an equal partner, and you can't ask for more than that from anyone. And he taught me there's only one thing, really, that you shouldn't be afraid of, and that's failing. Once you get past that, you're a real man without fear. You can do that. You can do anything. Now, Daredevil's not usually this optimistic, I'll tell you that much. So then Karen goes, I assume... That means you think Daredevil can carry on for the Avengers and the Fantastic Four, Mr. Nelson? Um, I hadn't really thought about it, but yeah, I hope so. I mean, I'd really hate if something happened to him. And Karen says, I know what you mean. Now let's see what our next caller, Mike, in the Bronx, has to say. Well, I say, we've heard what your callers think of the Scarlet Swashbuckler. This Crimson Swashbuckler, that's also one of Daredevil's mannerisms, as the, one of Daredevil's nicknames, along with the Man Without Fear, both both were in Daredevil number one. Uh, they were introduced, so he had two nicknames from the very start. But I digress again. But I'd like to hear what you think of him, Paige. I think Daredevil's a good man, after she pauses for a bit. And a good man to have by your side when times are tough. And she just goes on how she's biased because Daredevil saved his her life more than once but then she points out that half the Big Apple could probably say the same thing but she wouldn't be there today if not for him so she kind of goes a little bit into her backstory about her trying to be an actress once and you know the road to fame isn't as important as the mark you leave and Karen kind of starts to met herself and Mike says uh we still talking about Daredevil here and then she asks Mike what he thinks about Daredevil and Mike says he's blind. And the next panel reveals that Daredevil <gasps> is Mike. 
Daredevil is calling as Mike, which is a nice nod to what I uh, the Mike Murdoch saga way back when, where he yeah, <laughs> what a jerk. Because Mike, they were great friends with Mike Murdoch. Then he killed Mike, and they were really upset. But Mike wasn't real, so I don't know. It was funny, but anyway, Mike. Uh, so Daredevil's blind to people, what people think about him at least, but you're right, Paige. Who you are doesn't matter as much as what you do. Take Wilson Fisk Radio, for instance. A lot of bad rumours about that place. Money laundering, mob connections. You ask me, a man who dresses like the devil would appreciate the irony of someone trying to use a place like that as a power for good. Well, I better get going. Talk to you later, Paige. Uh, and then she slips a bit, says Matt, but then she recovers and goes, Matter of fact, we have to go too. But we'll be right back after this important message. So Daredevil is pretty happy right now. For this one moment, it doesn't matter if people think he can fill the shoes of the world's mightiest heroes or not. He leaps into the air and he feels like he can fly. And it does look like he is indeed flying. He's quite happy. And we cut to a great panel showing the ruined Fantastic Four building, the Baxter building. There's like a big chunk missing from the side. For Freedom's Plaza sways so little in the morning sun, most people wouldn't notice it. Now we cut to Daredevil standing on a rooftop, just looking up at it as the sun rises. I notice it, and while I may not have the raw power of the heroes who used to live here, I will do everything I can to make sure this building is a legacy to their greatness and not a tombstone. All around me, the city that never sleeps begins to move again. Delivery trucks filled with warm breads or cool produce rattle down side streets. Alarm clocks ring. The smell of coffee fills the air. Horns blare at a fender bender blocking Canal Street and West Broadway. Karen signs off for the night. Across town, a security bell goes off. Time to get to work. Daredevil leaps down the building. And the big free dive ready to head to the crime scene. And yeah, we cut to cops coming to the crime scene as uh, the place being robbed. And they come across this guy, and they call him stupid, and he's like, you're going to be real sorry I called me that. I'll touch anything I want, because I'm Crusher Creel, the absorbing man. I faced down Thor. I took on all the Avengers. This town's mine now. Who's going to stop me? Who's going to dare? And then Daredevil swings in, kicking the absorbing man in the face, who's turned himself into a brick wall, sort of. Well, he's made of bricks now. Anyway, Daredevil remarks, could he ask for a better entrance line or what? And yeah, he kicks him in the face, Throck, and next issue, Daredevil in the deadliest fight of his life against alone against the Absorbing Man. Fun fact about Crusher Creel, the Absorbing Man, is the fight that uh, Batlin Jack, Matt's dad, won in the Netflix series that he was supposed to throw was in fact against Crusher Creel. So... Not in the comics, but in the show. So that's a little note. So yeah, I um, hope you guys enjoyed that. Uh, sorry about any traffic or my sore throat getting in the way. But yeah, I really like that issue. Daredevil 359. You can pick that up uh, in the Epic Collection. Widow's Kiss, which uh, covers Joe Kelly's run, I believe. Actually, I'll just double check this is in that Epic Collection because I'd be silly if it wasn't. Um... Oh, no, sorry, it is not in the Epic Collection, Widow's Kiss. It is, uh... I don't know if it's collected or anything, but it is a pretty cheap issue. Uh, I just picked it up at local comic store for five bucks, so I'm sure you can find it on eBay or something. Uh, it'd be pretty cheap to grab. I definitely recommend grabbing it. It's a great little issue. It's a great standalone issue. It's nice and it's nice and cozy. It's just uh, and it gives a lot of interesting insights. It shows what people of New York think of Daredevil, especially now that he's like the only hero to protect them besides Spider-Man, I guess. And yeah, I'm just a really big fan of that issue. I think it's great. It's, it's definitely the best Daredevil issue out of that era. Like, by easily the best Daredevil issue from that era. So, yeah. Now, see if this is collected anywhere else. Uh, 
It's post. Okay, so it's post onslaught apparently. So it must need onslaught. That was. But yes. So I hope you guys enjoyed that as much as I did. Um, like, if you have any requests for us to cover any issues or for any issues to be covered, even just by me in like episodes where Carl can't make it, I'm happy to do any issue you want. I, I'm just doing Daredevil because I know a lot of Iron Fist fans like Daredevil as well, and I just thought I'd give you guys a bit of an insight into the more obscure Daredevil stuff. You know, not Frank Miller, stuff like that. Um, but if, if you don't like Daredevil, or if you just want if you want me to cover something specific, or us to cover something specific, just like give us a holler on our various things, which will be put at the end of the show, where you can reach us, all stuff like that. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed that was Daredevil, The Long Night, or also known as The Devil You Know. So, signing off. Until then, until next time when Carl's hopefully back, sleep well, and may your billy clubs become unto things of uh, iron sticks. Yes. See ya! Iron Fist and all other characters in these comics are properties of Marvel and Disney, and any music or images we use belong to their respective copyright holders, and we do this for fun, so please don't sue us. You can contact us at sonsofthedragonpodcast at gmail.com. Just send us mail, comments, thoughts, send us anything you want really, even if it's not about Iron Fist, um, and if you don't want it read it on the air, just mention that. Um, you can also reach us at Facebook. The Immortal Iron Fist Podcast, Sons of the Dragon. Our Twitter, at Iron Fist Podcast. Our SoundCloud, soundcloud.com forward slash Sons of the Dragon with hyphens where the spaces are. Our YouTube, Connor Carl. Just search Iron Fist Podcast on YouTube and you'll find us real quick. And then there's our WordPress, Sons of the Dragon, The Immortal Iron Fist Podcast dot WordPress dot com. We are also on iTunes. Feel free to rate us there if you rate us less than five stars. Well, just tell us what we're doing wrong and we'll try and improve that. And last but not least, we are on Podcast Garden in the literature section. And thanks to Thomas Tissot for the theme song at the start. And thanks.